The United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees approached CSAC seeking collaboration with Stanford. The UN Refugee Agency called on Stanford students to help them rethink the protection and support for more than 42 million refugees, as well as displaced and stateless people worldwide. Is it easy to reach them if you have a problem, or is there usually a long line or a long wait? Dozens of workshops with Stanford students have resulted in a global collaboration. These early discussions led to a multidisciplinary partnership involving CSAC, students from across Stanford, and NGOs. As you have now seen, it's very complex. There are many, many moving parts. There are many complex issues. Physicians, architects, and other professionals have also volunteered their time and expertise to this project. Now, a Stanford Law School class that's looking for ways to rethink refugee communities heads out to camps in Ethiopia. They're there to test out prototypes and to collect information. Do you use mobile phones or radio or anything like that? The prototypes will look at a wide range of issues, including camp communications, mobile phone software for registration, food security, economic self-sufficiency, host community relations, and shared spaces. Now you've seen some of the barriers, but I think you've already started from a place of this can work, this can work, and so we can start to look at how to overcome those barriers. But when they landed on the ground, they received a hard dose of reality. A lot of the ideas and a lot of the programs and the, the concepts that I've been working with on my team at Stanford have already been thought about and been thought through with UNHCR and IRC. The students learned that good ideas from the classroom don't always translate in the field. Not today, it's your, your food. What's he saying? It's He's sick. Oh, sick. After interviewing dozens of families and refugee community leaders, the students gained first-hand knowledge of the situation. Nasser Din Ahim tells us that he went to evening school to learn English and that he is now teaching within his community. He's a hard worker who knows that English skills will be useful if he has a chance to leave but is frustrated by the lack of opportunities available to him now. And what do you do to help the family? To help a family in this place. In this place, you know, there is no work and there is nothing to do. He's now responsible for his brother's wife, Mo Hassin Babakir. She's from South Sudan and says that her husband was at work when the fighting started in her area. She was forced to flee the country without him. We came and we across the border, only me and my uh, two children. At that time, I was pregnant. With these interviews, the Stanford team begins to understand the deep importance of their goals. Does your husband know that you are safe and your children are here? Uh, I don't think. The most impactful event in these last two days at the refugee camps was meeting each individual family and hearing their story. The thing that surprised me the most was that even when people, uh, even in the most difficult circumstances, those people are trying to have a normal life. Lack of funding commitments and long-term planning are at the root of most of the problems in the camps. How can we get these programs done, not just in one camp, but in many camps? After seeing the conditions firsthand, the students have become even more energized and motivated to help build out viable, long-term solutions. This particular team of students was chosen by their classmates as the first to represent Stanford out in the field for a project we intend to build out for years to come.